if I can get that in there. Okay, so I've been working on this model 347 for my friend Jen, and uh, I've, I've had problems with rust and how to clean the rust. Um, if you if you haven't seen the before pictures, it was full of uh, organic mouse leavings, <laughs> and uh, it was in pretty bad shape. This is probably the dirtiest machine I've ever seen, um, and uh, the most challenging one so far. But it clean it cleaned up uh, good with the red cutter cleaner, but that does not have any effect whatsoever on rust. And I, I still had a lot of rust uh, afterwards, and I attacked it with my Dremel and got off as much as I could, and uh, t to my dismay, after I cleaned it with the crud cutter, uh, it was about four or five hours before I came back and put some oil on it. And I noticed some light rust in places, didn't think much of it, but the next morning the rust was there and worse under the oil. And a commenter on some of my uh, videos for this, Old Timer Lee, had shared his methods for cleaning metals. And he, I think he does mostly cast iron cookware and maybe stoves and, and uh, uses lye and electrolysis and all kinds of things. But he gave me some good ideas about heating the oil and, and uh, even some vinegar processes that he uses. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the oil was was in place, uh, or a lot of the rust was in places that I couldn't uh, get to, and to, to dismantle, I'd have to take off that main horizontal shaft and everything that's attached with it, and that's that's a big, huge deal for me. So um, you could see areas, yes, you could see areas that I couldn't I couldn't get to. So. I, I was looking around for I got to find some way to get this rust. I look at that, look at that motor, and uh, looking for chemicals that I could use. And yeah, look at that, look at those discs from the from the th thread tension unit up there. Eesh. So anyway, the first thing I went out and bought was was some new face masks for protection. And I did that because uh, years ago I had uh, did some work for a medical examiner and we were talking about sense of smell and so forth. And he told me that when you smell something that means particles and molecules of whatever it is you're smelling uh, are getting in your body. They're coming right up in your nose. So that's why when he did the autopsy he used a respirator. Not, unlike what you see on TV. So uh, I went out and bought some better ones here. I bought six of these at 3M that uh, they, they stop finer particles than the ones I bought at the dollar store. So I, so I got those and I uh, also did some research and and I found that my company that makes my favorite cleaner, Crud Cutter, now has a product called The Must for Rust, Rust Remover and Inhibitor. And uh, I went there to see if they had something. They, they didn't used to have this product, but now they do. And then I looked at it at Lowe's and Home Depot and read reviews, and people seemed pretty pleased with it. So I went to Home Depot, and I bought this 8-ounce uh, um, bottle of it for 5 bucks. And it says it dissolves and remove, removes rust, uh, creating an ideal surface for painting. It's water-based, biodegradable. It can protect bare metal even for up to 12 months with the inhibitor. Hmm, uh, okay. Um, so I was willing to try that at first. And while I was there, I also picked up a new tool, which is always fun. This is a three foot extension to my Dremel 4000. And it just 
attaches on here, you remove the existing uh, collet, and this has a 1 8 inch so, uh, steel cable that goes in a rubber tube like, and then you, you know, it's got places on the end for your attachments, but it's a lot smaller. It's like a small flashlight instead of this bigger one. And I, I was looking for that because I was having trouble getting to places. So when I got home, I, I didn't even hook it up yet. I just saw, can I get it to where I need to get in these places that the Dremel tool itself is too big? And I could. I could get, I could get to a lot more places. I was uh, real thrilled with that. It was 25 bucks. It happened to be marked down. I think it was usually 33 or 34 but uh, easy to attach and great to use. Uh, I'm really happy to have it. So in some of these places where, where I had rust that I couldn't get um, the Dremel wire brush in, I just dip my inner dental brush into the rust remover and I'd swab it around these areas that I, I couldn't get to. This main shaft that was so, so nasty, I just put a makeup remover cotton pad on there and, and drip some of the stuff on there to let it soak. Um, this area of the feed dogs that I couldn't get a brush into, it had little pockets of rust. I, I used that inner dental brush and I put some rust remover on there. Then I took the feet of the machine, the screws that hold the rubber feet, which are usually need work and in this case really needed work and I had brushed them and brushed them with that Dremel and I still had rust especially in the threads and the slot for the screwdriver. So I threw them in this plastic laundry cup I use and I threw in the uh, disc from the tension unit that I had uh, already cleaned up as much as I could with just the steel brush and I put them to soak and then uh, part of this motor where I knew I wouldn't get a brush in I just started taking q-tips with the rust remover and scrubbing it in here besides behind the motor bracket and 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 the rust just just came right off like if you were using the alcohol and getting you know grease off or something it was quite Quite fascinating to me. Um, I went through about six or eight of the Q-tips, but you you can see the rust and muck that it would pull out of there. And uh, once once I got most of it out, I swabbed it uh, pretty good and just let it sit there for a while. And uh, I went to these areas I couldn't get through before, and I I cleaned my oil brush and then put that. Um, rust remover and painted it all over pretty generously and put it to soaking in there and the same thing on the main shaft spots that I couldn't get a brush to and that had still shown rust I used a q-tip or my oil brush to, to put the rust remover on there and get it soaking um, this is what that rust points look like before in areas that I couldn't get the, the, the Dremel into. So, uh, when I went back to this top shaft where I first put it, the rust was gone. So I just took a, a Q-tip with alcohol and, you know, got it in there, got it all wet and dried it as best I could and ran a little strip of t-shirt rag in there to kind of mop it up because it says to, to, to wash it and I, I'm not going to do the whole crud cutter cleaner thing again and water and start all over and it cleaned up real nice and the, the shaft cleaned up pretty good too so I was happy with that um, I went back now with my new Dremel and this had been uh, soaking for about 15, 20 minutes while I did the other parts. Came back here and put that Dremel brush in there and buzzed it up and uh, got in there with a Q-tip and alcohol and wow, I'm really pleased with that. 
I'm just so, so pleased with this whole method. This is the area on the main shaft around the gear and the, and the fork shaft where I cleaned up with the rust remover. And uh, since I had cotton swabs all wet with this, I went ahead and put a light coat on this that I'd worked extensively on with the brush before. And it cleaned it up better. The feed dogs came out amazingly, like down to the bare metal, kind of clean. This is a little piece of cotton from the Q-tip I'll have to take off. But it got the rust just like that. I 15 or 20 minutes sitting on it, I would estimate. I then took out my screws for the feet and was really happy. Look how clean they are. The rust is gone. Um, these are painstaking to do because you got to hold them with a needle nose plier and put the brush on them and you know try and get into the little grooves of the thread and I cannot get into the slot for the screwdriver. I have to take my inner dental brush with some Brasso and scrub in there and rinse it and by soaking it 15, 20, I know it was less than a half hour pulling them out. That's how they looked after I just washed them with water. And look at the inside of that screw slot. It's so nice. <laughs> and it was great that I could be doing other stuff while these were soaking in the chemical. So it's very productive. Uh, these are how the disc came out after soaking in there less than a half hour. And then I buzzed everything up with my uh, Dremel uh, especially the raised circles in here, that's the part that actually contacts the thread. And I wanted those to be really clean and smooth. And they came out clean and clean and smooth. Now I've got them all oiled up to recoat them. And when I go to reassemble the tension, I'll wipe off the excess oil and stuff. But uh, these are probably some of the cleanest feet screws I've ever done especially in the slots. Um, I had swabbed the side of the motor here and you can see what the part I haven't done in here looks like and that was on there 15 or 20 minutes uh, wiped off with alcohol and then uh, done with the brush got about 95 percent of the rust. There's some staining here. After I did the whole motor the first time I came back and touched up these areas with the rust remover, let it sit 15 minutes, wiped it off, and redid it with the Dremel. Really came out, came out sweet. I did the plug with just a Q-tip and the rust remover and cleaned it all out. I'd already done that with the crud cutter cleaner. Now using the crud cleaner rust remover, it just got the places around the edges where rust had, had started. And that was just swabbing it out with the rust and then swabbing it out with alcohol to get the rust cleaner out of there. I did the back of the switch with uh, a couple of Q-tips, just kept rubbing until it came off and then wiped it with alcohol. The, got rid of all that rust. Um, the small areas here that I would brush on with a brush like this and put some of the rust remover and let it sit and go back and wipe it off with a rag or q-tip and brush. The commutators I never put any chemicals on. I just take a small uh, strip of 600 grit um, sandpaper and hold it uh, lightly against the commutators while I spin the motor pulley and just kind of gently sand those down to get most of the carbon deposits off. They're not that thick to begin with, so I, I just want to try and remove the carbon and I'm, I'm just very leery of putting any chemicals in there, so I, I never do. And uh, this was the top end, dirtiest part of the motor when I started. This is after one 15-20 minute treatment with the rust remover and then the Dremel brush. You can still see that there's some here. So th this isn't, these are areas where I'd go back and put another light coat later in the day, let it sit, and then do the wire brush and 
get more of it out of there. Yeah, you, you can see what these areas look like before. This is after uh, cleaning with crud cutter and alcohol and stuff. So all the grease and grime and mouse stuff is gone, but just as the rust that remains. So, I am, I am really thrilled with this product. I, you know, it's, it is the, as a disclaimer, it's the only rust remover product, really, that I've, I've used. I've never used uh, any other chemical or vinegar or Coca-Cola. Some of the stuff I've read and was told about, I've just, this is the first one. And my grandfather was a chemistry professor for almost 40 years. And, um, you know, I saw him use chemicals a lot in his shop and I just wanted something I could use like this without more dismantling of the machine. So between the crud cutter rust remover and my new Dremel extension, uh, I'm way ahead of the game now on this. My uh, used oil plate, oil pan on the bottom that I bought off eBay, arrived from New York um, in today's mail, and uh, it's in good shape. I, I, of course, the felt smells like, uh, you know, an old garage, so I had to use the crud cutter cleaner and spray that, let it soak, and wash that, and I'm letting it dry right now. But uh, I'm going to be able to start reassembling this machine, and I'm really excited to see if I can make it so, I think I'm worse, I'm, you know, I'm way past the worst of this uh, machine, thank goodness. And uh, <clears throat> we'll see what we can do. I, I hope you watch, keep watching, and uh, I'll try and get some other videos up there of uh, finishing up and test sewing and stuff. But thanks for watching this one, and take care.